1129 living dolls were you excited when you hopped into this chapter you know you were excited come on i mean is it too far to say best chapter of elbath so far here's the thing we haven't collabed in the past i think week and a half two weeks i didn't really get what your mindset was coming into this chapter like i didn't talk to you about like the sun god like who do you think it is and stuff like that no. but no. like Coming into this chapter, bro, who were you expecting? Because I put out theory videos saying, yo, it's a it's an Elbath princess. <laughs> you know, where were yeah. you at? Where were you at, man? I mean, I thought it was Katakuri, you know. Um, <laughs> it always nah. comes back to Katakuri, <laughs> huh? <laughs> I was close. He had All a scarf. Um, no, it, I wasn't. I think I was leaning, leaning towards like the princess thing. Yeah. You know, whereas like because the person didn't seem as sinister. I was yeah, like, ah, they don't seem like super evil. I feel like they're trying to cosplay a little bit. Yeah, they're just, just having one fun. of those. Yeah, so I was like, all right, is this like a carrot thing where like you know they encounter somebody that they initially attack Zoro and you know they go a better route. Um, but then what happened was because after that we had a break. We, we just came off break. No, no yeah, back to back I think we, I think we, we just had came a break, break in between there somewhere. Somewhere. Uh, um. So then I didn't really think about it for a while because I feel like. Something I was talking about yesterday is like, okay, the intro to these arcs sometimes is kind of, it's like a slow burn, you know? Um, but this time it's a little different because I, I, I mean, I enjoyed the chapter. Um, I'm not overly hyped for it. And I think it's because the Strides, they're a Yonko crew. At least in Egghead, it was like, all right, we have the Seraphim, we have all this different stuff with the Gorsei. Here we have a giant. All right. Not even like a noteworthy giant either. Just a giant. Just That's a giant. all it really is. And we saw what Luffy did to his captain? Wasn't it a jet one jet pistol, right? One In jet Rosa. Yeah. So uh you know, and, and and it's like for me when I was reading, it was like less about, okay, let me just not think about that. Let me just have fun with the chapter. And when I did that, it was cool. It's just a fun chapter. Straw Hats, Oda trying to give that vibe of, you know, pre-time skip. They're running away because they have to. Then eventually they turn around and fight because they have to. Um, and I think that's the, I think that's what you should take away from it as opposed to, well, what's happening here? And I think Oda is intentionally um, kind of screwing Usopp over. Yeah. Uh, to kind of set it up for him to be successful in the future. Yeah, no, I feel the same way. But like between him versus east cad and then nami had to save him and then you know like luffy kind of talking about him like hey usopp you could have mm -hmm. done that right and then even in this chapter like yeah right. he cracks the mirror but he doesn't break the wall so it's like ooh, it's like he, he he could be performing a little bit better for sure you feel it you feel it and so again i still expect i'll have to be usopp's arc but i mean in general i don't know how to describe it it's like i'm excited but i'm not sure what i'm excited for yeah you know like i know the, the giants and that hierarchy and system is something that's going to be revealed and it's going to be lore but i feel like i'm less prepared for elbath than i've been for any other arc even whole cake island i felt more prepared for you know yeah, i think it's just because you don't really know what to expect right it, it's yeah. like getting the reveal this chapter that the sun god is actually just road and like, you know I, I, I kind of get it, right? Like, the Straw Hats are running away. They're Yonko crew, but they don't want to fight them, right? Like, it's it's Usopp kind of holding them back, saying, yo, like, we don't want to antagonize the Giants. We don't know anything about this situation. So that's how I dial it back. Like, yeah, like, even in this chapter, nobody cares. Dude, like, everybody yeah. looked at this guy. They said, he looks weird. All right, let's just go on with our day. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, he was such yeah. a sideshow. So I feel like, in a way, they do portray that Yonko crew feel, even though they're, like, running away from him. Because they really just couldn't care less about this guy. Yeah, it, they rode... I don't know if he gets past Jinbei. I don't think he gets past anybody. <laughs> I, I mean, Nami took him down. I'm like, Dude, Chopper could take this guy down. Frankie... I would say even Usopp could take this guy down. Like, I feel like we all could. Like, that's why he's not really a big deal. Like, he's he's just kind of there, right? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, it's like... It, bro, there's so much going on in the chapter. I don't know if you want to go go through it in chronological order. This chapter, it was a lot of um, building of different characters, I yeah. think. Subverting expectations. And also, like, having Road 
in some way, because people are calling him racist. I don't think he's racist. I think he's just, uh, he just feels like he's superior because he's bigger than the humans. And yeah. again, his captain kind of being subservient to humans, he now has a point to prove. So then he creates this like living doll environment, which is kind of like he had, remember the chapter was called RPG a few chapters ago. Yeah. Um, and then uh, somebody had commented, said road playing games. And so for him, it's almost like he created this ecosystem and it's playing out in a way that he didn't expect. So it's like exciting, you know? He's like, oh man, look at these little people fighting back. This is amazing. Look at what I created, you know? So he's just, he he's is- He's having fun, man. He's having fun, but it's like core, like character things going on with him that's kind of being resolved through this small, simple game. And so that's why I feel like with this chapter, because the the major things weren't, as interesting i was kind of looking at the ancillary parts like okay what about okay what is it about road like why do you have a toy like uh basically country and you're basically kidnapping humans and having them live here and then you're making these animals gods and you're having them live out these scenarios and you're the sun god and it's just it's him having a superiority complex and feeling inferior to him or humans because of his captain kind of bending the knee so it's just like this is how he can feel like a king you know yeah like, so it, it's, it's a mixture of that and yeah, plus i yeah. think he's just a nerd he's very nerdy he, he he was into it dude he was having he was actually like reading these lines with like his chest out man like yo history is being made like D and D, this how like D and D, like how they play D&D, yeah right where it's like you set up all these different scenarios and you kind of talk through them so i think road but it, like imagine it coming to life you know like so it's just for him it is it's kind of cool right but yeah, it's kind of like messed it. up because it's actually <laughs> he's like actual people you know um it's crazy that like he found he knew who they were and he just like all right let me just knock him out one more time you know yeah he uh, just he thought he could win here too which is insane like it kind of makes you wonder like what his worldview is right like hey i got luffy and the boys here like i'll just so, dress him up and drop him it's fine remember he said we didn't acknowledge him so oh i didn't acknowledge him my captain did so it's yeah. like a superiority comp complex where he still feels like he's better and i don't think he's gonna think that anymore you know um yeah i did see some people having issues with this chapter though some issues uh people were talking about was the was it the mist sea oh the, the mist sleeping belt? mist yeah the mist belt they're saying like why did the giant say anything about it well, they were drunk, you know, like when you're drunk, some sometimes things go over your head. You kind of forget about the sleeping mist belt. It's just one of those oopsies, right? Yeah, I guess. It, it, it's, it's like driving on a road, like the, the one road you take home every day and you just forget to mention the pothole. Ah. Uh. I maybe maybe I feel like it's a little worse than a pothole. Yeah, it's a little bit worse than a pothole, that's for sure. <laughs> you forget to mention like the spike the nails on the left side of the street or something. Now, I mean, I think it's, I mean, it's small things that you can kind of dissect, but obviously they're drunk. They had the absinthe, right? They were knocked out. They Then on top of that, they go through the sleeping mist belt. And then, you know, they get kidnapped by this giant crow thing, or whatever the hell it was. It was a, I don't know what it was. Yeah, it's like bird. a crow, Mugen. Yeah, so it kidnaps them. And then, you know, uh, freaking uh, road is gooning over Nami. Dude, he, he, I like how he double douses them too. He just has mist in his pocket ready to go. But that's my thing is like, he got Nami dressed, right? Oh yeah, dude. Yeah. yeah. He's a little freaky. He's a little bit freaky. I it's mean like, man. his nose changed too. Like he didn't look this creepy when we first saw him in the cover pages. Like oh, it's only scarf, recently. No? He had the scarf, but like the nose, like he got that, he got ah, those yeah, snippers yeah, yeah. in this chapter. He's like a uh, like a young Severus Snape, you know. A young giant Severus Snape, yeah. <laughs> it's just like a that he's going for kind that look, you hair. know. Yeah. The bang covering the one eye, just brooding. You know, he has issues he got to take care of, bro. Except Snape wasn't really like undressing the school kids. Thank God. No, no, that yeah, would be a little yeah, weird. That would be a little bit weird. This That'd is why be I became weird. a teacher. But it's funny because Snape had like this look, but he was really a good guy. Yeah, yeah. Spoiler he was kind alert, of cos but... I mean, bro, listen. If at this point, 
if at this point you haven't watched Harry Potter, ah, fuck you, you know? Like, it's... <laughs> well, okay, spoiler. What are you going to spoil next, the Bible? Wait, wait, I mean, like, you know, I'm sorry, Cain and Abel, hey. <laughs> yeah. It didn't work out. Don't don't bet on Abel, all right? Yeah. <laughs> Watch out for rocks. No, it didn't work out for him. Um, when did when did Harry Potter come out? Like two thousand five? I don't I don't remember. Two thousand and five sounds right. Two thousand and one. Two thousand one, bro. Like, come on. That's the movie. Uh, the novel started in nineteen ninety seven. Wow, J.K. Rowling is old. My God. Ah, uh, yeah. Amongst other things, if you let the internet tell it, but. yeah, yeah, she's also like a she's like a vampire. I feel like every picture I see of J.K. Rowling, she's just like su sipping wine in a chair. She looks the same too to me. Yeah, like, it's kind of crazy. The thing is, when I hear about J.K. Rowling nowadays, it's just like a lot of just viral shit that she says. On yeah, Twitter. it's just Twitter. Just Twitter, just mad at her. Uh, I saw somebody who blacked out their tattoo because they uh, <laughs> they were against her and like her uh, her some of her world views. Yeah, and all, I th all in her tattoo, all she had was like the um, what do you call it? <laughs> she had like a huge arm tattoo, and she had one little thing that was the uh, what did Harry catch? Like the, the broom, the, like that little golden ball with the wings, golden... right? <sighs> snitch? Was it a snitch? The snitch. I think it was yeah. a snitch. She had like the snitch in the middle of her tattoo, which she covered the entire thing. What? It like, no, it's not worth it. No, yeah, come I'm on, like, come on, bro, come on. Like, what? What, what are you doing? What's your most disliked video? Do you, do you know? Like, off the top of your head? I was speaking from the perspective of, like, a Luffy hater, but I don't think I revealed it to the end of the video. Oh, so they watched, like, five minutes and, like, okay, this guy's nuts. Yeah, and it got, like, some dislikes. Oh, I in my top 30s. <laughs> your top 30s get disliked? Is it yeah, because it's the, all Katakuri? Well, he's normally top 10, so, you know. My God. Uh, I think what it is, it's, like, if I asked... 100 people 100 one piece fans to make a top 30 strongest list i don't think 100 people have the same list no i don't think so, so either. when we kind of broaden that and you have me putting my list out there you'd have people that be like i like your list but i mean marco at 20 that's blasphemous and it's like well where do you have marco 18 <laughs> like just just two above I, I mean right then there was somebody else who's like um oh, marco at 18 where do you have marco 22 and people <laughs> like go it's like small variances but all these small variances lead to like like let's say it's like ten thousand different people nobody's gonna agree on this thing because no like it's no set thing i'm sure Odo would have a different list every year yeah and then plus we also have to bet on potential too right like characters who haven't fought yet like Garland, for yeah. example portrayal right it's like ooh, I you don't know? know scenarios you have to kind of work through, especially one piece and all the different powers so that's one that like i mean it's not like a you know like a ksi uh, <laughs> thick of it it's not a thick of it but um you know in comparison to like the regular videos like we're i think the regular videos be like 97 98 percent 99 sometimes this is like a 92 a 92 yeah, yeah yeah damn where people are just like no nah, i can't you oh no nah, you have you have mihawk over a kainu i can't nah it's like, <laughs> yeah. bro, like, <laughs> it's like we haven't even seen the fight really it's like okay you know it's, a, it's like it's whatever you know, it's a toss-up but i get i mean i get it that's why the yeah. one piece fan base is well why one piece is what it is as well because the fan base is just so die hard and you yeah know, so I think strong opinions are welcomed. It's just like when it goes past that, that's when it's... Uh, yeah, there's like a fine line when it comes to opinions, right? It, it's, yeah. it's, it's when you start like pushing it too hard or like you start being dismissive to other people. It's like, ah. And then and it's, it's one of those as well as a, as a content creator. He just doesn't want to... He just doesn't want to engage because it's just like, you know how people are. It's uh, you don't know these people, so they can just like... They can say whatever, you know, yeah. grandstand. And they're like, yeah, well, I would never... I would never look at Bonnie that way, you know. And it's just like I remember um, you posted a thumbnail back when we hit uh, Egghead Island of Bonnie just rubbing her shirt before we knew she was a kid. And I was like, people were going, people were going back on it because I think you were like licking your lips and rubbing yeah, your like, hands. <laughs> and, and the crazy part, right? People were like, "Are you going to delete the thumbnail?" 
No. No, you shouldn't delete it. Why the fuck? Why would I delete the thumbnail? That's a good that, thumbnail. It's funny. I, I mean, it's, it's one of those where it's just like, yeah, that's when we thought Bonnie was an adult. I mean, and so it's just now it's now it's it'd be a little weird, a little different to do yeah. that because we know she's a kid. But, you know, at the time it's based off what we do. It is what it is. I'm not going to delete it now. Do you yeah. think Rhodes going to still be standing next chapter, dude? Um, No, I think he's going to bend the knee. <laughs> you think so? He's, he's just done like one right hand. That's it. If Rhodes. OK, Oda has a chance to do something interesting. If Rhodes is still standing, then it's building up the giant pirates. Or giants in general, because I feel like I feel like in general, we have diehards that believe the giants are the best thing since devil fruits. Uh, and then you have the people that are like giants of trash. Then you got people in the middle of this like, yeah, I like giant lore, you know? Yeah. I like, uh, I like John giant. I like Ors junior. Um, but in, I think for the most part, the giants aren't viewed as favorably. You kind of have to project with the Giants, because every time we've seen a Giant, it's been just... They've just it hasn't been, been great. Yeah, it hasn't been great. I, I mean, what? We had Oimo and Kashi losing to Polly and some rope. <laughs> I mean, we, you, Mr. 3 was about to kill Dorian Brogy during their 100-year duel. John Giant like, was an experiment by Whitebeard. Yeah, John Giant got waxed, and then John Giant also... Not John Giant, but Whitebeard and Ors also took down, like, the five Vice Admiral Giants, like... But These then the warlords good. teed off on Ords. So Ords got <laughs> yeah. completely whack. And we saw in the recent anime episode. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Garp, he put in the work on San Juan Wolf. A giant One who hit. Has a giant, giant fruit. One hit. No hockey. And he got Dude. sent flying. These giant, like, I, yeah. the thing is, it, right? Like, Egghead Island, they can get boosted. But you got to admit, their initial showings aren't ever grand. Yeah. So it's I think not. people have a, they have a really bad view in regards to the, the giants and what, what they, I think people are excited for the lore, but like beyond that, it's just like, I don't know. Yeah. I, I think know. we need like a giant that's super powerful, like off rip to change that perception. Gonna, think we're going to have that? I think so. We, there has to be, right? This is the land of fighters, man. Like the land the of strongest brawlers. Army. The strongest army. Big Mom said she could take over the world with these guys. Like, I mean, of course, but, I think she was just gassing herself up, but still, like... Big Mom, Alex Jones. <laughs> yeah, she's just, just spouting nonsense. I mean, here's the thing, right? Like, there's got to be a giant like with a crazy devil fruit. Like, a giant with a Logia. A giant with a Zoan. Like, they'd be massive. So, like... I, I'm trying to get there. Okay, here's the thing. I don't want to speculate on what a powerful giant could be necessarily because it's hard to get there for me i do agree there's going to be a really strong probably two or three strong really strong giants that we're going to throw into the top 30 after we see them i think the main thing that they have to show uh as a giant is um i guess speed right because yeah. um i was watching attack on titan yesterday and those are giants and it's still really enjoyable to see them fight and to see them interact, you know, because it's like it's a lot of technique within the things they do. And but it's it finds a way to make it interesting. I just wonder how a lot of these giant interactions, if we get actual, you know, fights and stuff outside of Luffy, you know, maybe Robin, because Robin can turn, you know, fairly large. It's just going to it's going to feel off and i think that's what people are necessarily looking forward to but i do expect really i expect at three really strong giants i'm talking yeah. about three giants that i don't know maybe commanders of a yonko crew, yeah basically like zoro ish level yeah zoro a little higher maybe have one a little higher than zoro you know that we're gonna have somebody that they're gonna say Something like, if I wanted to be a Yonko, I could be a Yonko. Ooh, that'd be cool. If I wanted the world, I'd have it. If I wanted, yeah, you know, like and he'd have like his zero. He'd have he'd have his two like warriors next to him, you know. And it's just like that's the lore I think they need because you built up this giant, 
the Elbaf army, but I think they're going to be s- different subsections, obviously, in Elbaf, because I think they're going to be some that are subservient and loyal to Shanks, and they're going to be some that probably hate Shanks. Like we don't, because like even I think this, right, this could be a microcosm of what it is, right? Because we have Road, who's like, yeah, because people like people, people are like uh, complaining about how I said how high Rudin, like oh, the J S Island, like oh, fucking One Piece. <laughs> it's how Rudin? It? Fandom. It's like high Rudin. So, um, fuck, I forgot what I was saying. What was I saying? You were saying that uh, this was like a microcosm. Uh oh oh oh! I think with Road not bending the knee, right? And yeah. Because even though he's acknowledged by uh, Luffy, or Luffy's acknowledged by Harudin, for a Road, he's like, well, that's not me. And the other Elbaf giants could feel the same about Shanks. But it's like certain factions in Elbaf could bend the knee to Shanks, but the other ones are like, we're Elbaf giants. We're not gonna bend the knee to a human, you know. So like, we could see more of that. Race, I don't know if you want to call it racism, you know, pride in one's race. Uh, yeah. To, uh, in, I, th- I think we see more of it in Elbaf, where it's just like these giants, they have so much pride that they're not going to say, yo, we're serving anybody, right? They were willing to somewhat do it and be like, I, I think they're trying to be allies with Big Mom through the marriage, right? Where it's like the only way is through marriage, we'd be allies, but we're not serving under yeah another yonko which tells me that i expect strong combatants and in general to shoot you know give it shoot the giant some bail in general the average giant is going to be difficult for is way more stronger than the average human oh 100 percent. you know so with giants they're way more powerful from just base because they're still big. They're still really strong. They can do a lot of damage from base. But it seems like the skill points, like to get to the next level, it's, a, it's, it's hard. So like we're humans. They seem to evolve really quickly. The giants that we've seen. I would like to see a giant with Geppo. Ooh. That'd be horrifying. With the six powers. That'd be scary, can, dude. Can you, can you imagine a giant Shigan? Yeah, he just shoves his finger in the in the like the dirt. But I, that giant with Geppo would be scary, you know. Um, so, I, I, to to put it mildly, I think we'll have strong giants. But yeah, I'm 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 apprehensive. You know, you mentioned it earlier, but now I'm kind of curious how the giants are going to react to Luffy. Like, even knowing he's the sun god, because there might be some giants who look at him and they're like, "Oh, this guy's tiny." He's just the human. Like, I wonder if they'll start denying that this is the real sun god even. You seen Dune? Doom or Dune? Yeah. Dune. Dune, yeah. Was it? Dune, uh, Dune 1, not Dune 2. You haven't seen Dune 2? No, I don't want to. I don't like movies that take place in sandy areas, man. You hate, you hate sand? Yeah, I'm not a big sand guy. Huh. So how do you feel like, about Alabasta? I like crocodile. I, I like sand powers, but I don't like sand. So whenever Wait, so I get to like Alabasta, I, I try to like you know look past it. Like um, you you know like when you see a girl and you you just say, oh, I'm I'm focused on your eyes. I don't look at I don't look down there. You know what I mean? It's it's like one of those situations in Alabasta where I just look at oh, the characters, you, but I don't look at the sand in the background. I was gonna say, oh, when you're lying. Yeah. Um, <laughs> when you're like, yeah, essentially. So you don't like the beach? Um, the beach is tolerable because there's like the ocean right behind it to like offset it. But in Alabasta and Dune and, you know, Mad Max, for example, it's like 90% sand. Yeah, I've never seen Mad Max. I've seen previews and I've seen it. Um, yeah. Okay, this isn't a spoiler because, you know, it's obvious. But, you know, you've seen one and they brought the kid in and uh, they're looking at this kid like... You're not one of us. You're not who they say you are. We don't believe it. You got to prove it to us. So, for Luffy, I kind of expect a trial by fire. Mm, like, oh, the real sun god could do this. Can you do it? And like, it's going like to be that. a situation where maybe Luffy is not going to want to do it. Right? Because Luffy can just beat their ass. But maybe Usopp convinces him to do it. 
I it's like he wants the opportunity to kind of become a great warrior in front of these great giants, you know, where Usopp's like, it's only something I can do. Luffy, like, you guys are all monsters. Nami can do this. You can, this is something I can do, you know? It could be an Usopp character moment that I think would be really cool. And, you know, Luffy, that's something that he would like. All right, Usopp, you got it. Yeah. And the so. thing, too, is that if there is, like, a, a sun god test, I feel like it's going to be really warped. Because Rode, for example, right, he's cosplaying as the sun god. This yeah. is what he thinks the sun god is like. Or at least looks like, right? He has yeah. the crazy, like, skull head. He's got the robe on. He's got the weird, like, sun god staff. And it's like, what if we get to Elbaf and they're like, hey, like, the sun god is the word of liberation? No, no, no. He's the deer skull guy. What are you talking about, right? Right. Like, they're what if there's different... different subsections of religion there? Uh, I mean, it could be a situation where it's just like, we know religion, people call the deity different names. Yeah. You know, it looks different. Uh, some people say a he's a she, you know, skin color to origin. Could be the same thing that they're talking about, but based on the location, it changes to fit that culture. So, of course, to the Elbaf giants, you know what they're going to think the sun god is? Yes, a giant. <laughs> Yeah, it's, I mean, Sun God Nico is a giant fable, so the minute right? they see Luffy, it's like, wait a minute. Hey, this but, ain't then, but then we know what Luffy can do. is transform. He can transform into a giant. So it's a situation where it's uh, Luffy doesn't care to prove to these people who he is. He doesn't even Does, know what he is. He's like, I don't, what? Sun God, what? Nika, I'm Monkey D. Luffy. But in a roundabout way, he will prove it to them. And that's why people follow him. And that's why they're going to believe in him. Because he's not even trying to prove them wrong. And he will. Yeah. So it's, uh, they're going to they're gonna come around eventually. But I doubt. I doubt they're going to see Nika and be like, they're going to be like, oh, oh my God. <laughs> he's white now. <laughs> it's a white little kid. <laughs> <laughs> He can make pizza. Ooh. Like, so it's not, it's not going to be a situation. He has to do more than that. So, but by the end of Elbaf, they will 1000% acknowledge Luffy. 1, I think the one thing that Luffy has without like turning into a giant is that when he goes into Sun God Nika mode, he has the drums of liberation. So maybe they'll yeah. recognize the song because the giants were dancing when Luffy transformed. They're like, whoa, like we can't even save our ship. We're too busy dancing. They're like, oh, what's that? This is the Elbaf drums. Who's playing the, the, the royalty drums? That's only for when the, the, the kings walk in. Yeah. So like Luffy mm. could just whip that out and they're, they're going to be like, yo, like who gave you the, you know, who gave you the tapes? Blasphemous. Hyrule, was this your doing? Isn't it, uh, isn't it cool how Luffy can partially transform into gear four now? He's got, well, it is very impressive. However, it is very frustrating oh no why is that um because he's not going to use this frequently and you we're don't gonna think have so the, i think we're gonna have the drawback again the drawback isn't going away and so when luffy does something like this right using gear forth without transforming so you're telling me that you can use gear forth without the drawback of gear forth okay, okay. But here's the thing. When was the last time we've seen the drawback of Gear 4th, though? Uh, well, he hasn't used Gear 4th in that capacity in a long time, you know? But the last time, um, I think, because even Gear 4th has been evolving, because when he, I believe when he attacked, was it a ship? When he attacked a ship and Law attacked a ship or whatever? Oh, Onigashima? Yeah, and he just yeah. transformed without even blowing into his fist. Everyone's like, oh my god. Like, and so, like, he's growing in Gear 4th. However... That do you, you think the drawback doesn't exist anymore? Because I think I it still think it exists. Does. I think he just doesn't use Gear Fourth long enough. Because even when he's fighting Kizaru, he's Snake Man. He went right into Gear Five. Yeah, because like, he wasn't. You know, so it's just. I think the drawbacks are always going to exist because it's a built-in countermeasure that Oda has to somewhat limit and nerf Luffy because he kind of has to. Because that's talking about like Luffy at this point using um, a con gun, right? What's stopping Luffy from turning that into a Red Hawk? a red hawk rifle um advanced conquerors rio kong gun 
<laughs> I'm like, that's it's a, it's a hell of a Starbucks drink right there. Right, right. But it's like with his arm right now, he could twist it. He could literally rotate it like a rifle, throw it back for the fire effect, and then come forward with advanced conquerors and Rio. Who's taking that, bro? Uh, realistically, not a lot of people. <laughs> so it's like with Oda, and again, he ha- for Oda, he's also, you got to think about the author and what he likes. He's going to have more fun with Luffy in Gear 5. So as cool as this is, I think as more, I think Luffy would be a better fighter if he uses this form more. Even if he could pa- partially transform his arm to Gear 5, right? He'd be a much more effective fighter. But that's not really what Luffy is. He's kind of just like a brawler that tries shit and he has the endurance to withstand whatever so he can just keep trying shit until he gets it and so um for him as cool as this is and luffy can be super more much more efficient in different instances it doesn't fit Oda's style of how luffy is because luffy's kind of brash he breaks things he makes mistakes you know and it's it, it kind of ties into his personality so somebody that like this Luffy doing this is like if Katakuri had his devil fruit, which is like, all right, I want to use it a bit more. He even said that to Luffy in Whole Cake Island. Like, ah, uh, how about you do it like this? You could be more effective. Yeah. So it's, that's why it's frustrating. Cause I'm just like, this is what the potential of Luffy is. Like Luffy could dominate with this hybrid gear forth, even like with G- Luffy, say he doesn't have to blow into his arm anymore for this stuff. Like, Imagine Luffy attacking with like a jet pistol and in the midst of the attack, his arm turns into like a giant arm with with the effect of hockey and advanced conquerors. It's like that'd be crazy, man. I mean, that's the yeah. next level of Luffy, though. I feel like that's what we're going to see, like just that base form of Luffy getting much, much stronger with all the gears combined together. And you know what? as far as drawback goes, I feel like we've surpassed like the gear third drawback the gear second drawback yeah i feel like oda is going to be more fixated on the gear five drawback where he just turns into an old man but even yeah. then like we didn't even see it last chapter when he beat the snake which granted it was like a single hit so i mean you know like you said it he wasn't in there long enough to actually get that drawback to begin with mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but i feel like oda just he has phases on which drawback he wants to do like pull focus towards and i feel like it will just be that old man form for now yeah i think that's the because i've He's going to probably spam gear five because he enjoys it, you know? Yeah. Um, which, you know, that's a and it shouldn't topic. be that hard to like go into it since it's just like a, a zone too. Uh, it shouldn't, it shouldn't, but yeah, it shouldn't uh, theoretically. Yeah. But we know it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be something just to, just to keep Luffy somewhat balanced because he's just so powerful. I saw somebody saying the other day that, uh, they, they would bet on the straw has been the Blackbeard Pirates right now if they ran into each other. I've always felt like that. I mean, that's the thing with Blackbeard's crew, right? Like, Blackbeard's crew always feels like one of the weaker ones. When you look at the Yonkos, right? Like, I look at the Straw Hats and I look at Blackbeard's crew, I'm like, okay, the Straw Hats could probably take them. Same with the red-haired crew. But for Blackbeard, it goes back to, like, the top 30 thing. It's like, you kind of bet on potential in a way. Mm Mm-hmm. Like, Blackbeard and his crew on paper don't look that great. Yes, they're strong, but I just can't imagine a world where they beat Luffy or even Shanks' crew. But I just feel like they will. Like, narratively, the, the potential is there. I they just don't, don't know how PR. yet. There's no good PR for the Blackbeard crew. So, yeah. with Shanks' crew, they're getting, they have amazing PR, right? Oh, yeah. Where Oda put into the story, like, these commanders, they have the highest quality. Da, 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 da. They're the best herder, balanced herder. crew on the wor- in the world. It's like, so, damn, okay. And we've seen Shanks in action. And so the PR for them, Ben Beckman, you know, people, a lot of people view Ben Beckman as like, oh, the moon to Shanks' son. You know, whatever that means. Yeah, and then we have like Mihawk and Shanks and they, they're just perpetually like up at the top. It's like, dude, whether you think one is better than the other, it's like either way, they're like, they're, they're top five. These guys are then crazy. Look at, then look at Blackbeard's crew. Blackbeard, sure. People that don't have a strong or positive view of Shiryu necessarily. I think the last comparison we had for Shiryu was Magellan. Yeah. And people still underrate Magellan, in my opinion, because he was pre time skip. Luffy used Bazooka. He made him fall to his knees. Da, 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 da. I'm like, I'm like, bro, 
Magellan had essentially two warlords running away from him. And if you want to go deeper, I think Ivankov has the strength to be a warlord. Ivankov's Ivankov, pretty strong. Ivankov was running away. Like, they did not want to do this with Magellan, but he gets underrated. So, like, when people think of Shitty, they're like, well, Shitty was strong as Magellan. What's that? <laughs> strong as Magellan? You're nothing. And then Bird just got popped by Sabo. Then you have Doc Q. He's an idiot. Right? Van Auger, he <laughs> I looks I like how cool. that's all you had to say. Doc Q is kind of dumb. But like you Auger. had like something for every character. Hey, this is, ah, Doc Q's man, a loser. He's just dumb. He's just dumb. He's just dumb. And then he's going to fight, fight Chopper, who lost the trees. So it's just like, it's a, it's one of those where Van Auger, he's cool, but like he's a, he's, he's worse than uh, even a swordsman. He's a gun. Oh my God, really? And he fight, and he's fighting Usopp. So but I his, think his general, warping is cool. It's so cool. It's so amazing. But he's gonna fight Usopp. <laughs> so people <laughs> automatically bring him down because of that. Even though Usopp's gonna probably just beat him because he's gonna warp somewhere and think Usopp's not gonna see it, and Usopp's gonna send some like this misdirection popping star, you know? Yeah, like invisible star, like yeah, ricocheting star. It's going to be something like that where it's like, you know, oh, Van Auger got beat, but like, is Usopp stronger? Like, he won, you know? So, in like, for the, in the Katarina, she gets, I feel like in general, women in One Piece just gets, they get just disrespected a little bit just because they're, they're women in One Piece, which, you know, I get it. But Katarina, they're like, oh, I mean, she fights Nami, maybe. She can't beat Nami. I'm just like, she probably doesn't. Because, I mean, if they fight, most of the strides are going to all win their fights. You presume. Oh, yeah. Right? And so it's just people find just ways to disc this discredit everyone. It's like um, Avila Pizarro. It was like, oh, he's an island. And, like, we can take care of him. Then you have um, Vasco shot. Like, oh, man. Like, he, Jinbei can take care of him easily. You know? So the Black Bear Pirates, they don't have, we don't have anything to compare them to. You know, it's just like even when they went to Boy Hancock's island, Amazon Lily, and then like two of them got packed up by Boy Hancock. And it's just like, yeah, but it's Boy Hancock. Um, but I mean, the Black Bear Pirates have gotten to where they have gotten for a reason. You know, I just think um, in general, though, it's just about PR and how you view them. They need a big and even the, the fight versus Kuzan didn't help. I mean, yeah, because Kuzan kind of carried it. Versus right? Garp, because Kuzan carried, right? And we know how strong Kuzan is. So they're like, I mean, even, well, I don't think Kuzan was talking to them necessarily, but he was like, even if, what we say, even if Garp was, his hands were tied behind his back or something like that, he's like, you guys still couldn't kill him. So, you know. yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Like, I feel like they need a boost. I think since they something. specialize in Devil Fruits, I think they all have to awaken at the very least. Like, I you know, it's that, always that's the main way they can get stronger. It's, it's always interesting because I always wonder, like, what does Oda view these characters are as, right? Like, when he sees these characters, is he like, oh, man, like, they're, like, so impressive? Or is he just like, <laughs> I still need this guy? Dude, imagine. Imagine Oda's like, oh, dude. I bet shitty his PR is looking really good online. <laughs> because, I bet everybody loves Doc Q, huh? Bro, because I think about perspective, right? Where it's like you go out of your way to make a video, right? Yeah. And you think the video is good. You're like, I did research. I enunciated. I re-recorded some of those lines. I edited it together. It's a great video. Took me some time, but I got it done. And you have a viewer. It's like, ah, cool video. When's the next one? And you're like, motherfucker, that's all you got to say? But for you, you have a di different appreciation for that video because you know the time and energy went and the energy that went into it. So you're like, this is a good video. Yeah, you think Oda's like, like that? Oda's like, I, I've been writing for what, over two decades? I've created this amazing world of all these characters living breathing keeping this world making it feel alive and you you're wondering you're wondering why i haven't like presented the black bear pirates as stronger i gave them new devil fruits for christ's <laughs> sakes you're like yeah yeah mr oda but you gave them redundant devil fruits but well i gave them those devil fruits to match them because i thought they would learn them faster 
yeah, but what about this devil fruit? Why don't you give him the diamond fruit so that he can... Then you're getting into like factors and things you don't understand. You know, it's just like you're trying to predict things that you don't really... You can't predict. Um, there, there is but, one thing I think Oda could have done, which he didn't, he didn't He didn't have to expand upon it, but it would just make the Blackbeard Pirates look better. Just give them high bounties. Inflate them. Because we still don't know any of their bounties minus Blackbeard. I think even then it's kind of... I think what he should have done is give them each assignments. Oh, like what kind of assignments are we talking about? Characters. Oh, like to capture somebody or like to, to beat somebody or like what do you mean? Yes, to beat somebody. So like this is completely different, but what if instead of the payback war they had with the Black Bear Prize were hunting down the White Bear Prize one by one? Ooh, oh yeah, like we could have um yeah, yeah, yeah. So like then Shiryu, Shiryu beats like go Jozu. After Vista. Oh. Or, 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 or he Either goes one. after Vista, right? Once he beats Vista, it's like, okay. He's stronger than Vista. He's got something in the bag we don't see yet. He's got something. Once, once Burgess beats Jozu, it's like, hold on now. He beat Jozu. Yeah. Okay, here's the thing, right? Like, for Blackbeard, we know that there's something hidden there, right? Because we never see the ending of his fights... And there's the whole thing with Shanks. We didn't know. We don't know how that went down. So that's why we think Blackbeard has a lot of potential. But for these yeah. other guys, it almost feels like we've seen everything they have, which I don't think is the case. But, you know, th we, that's just we, like me thinking that, right? Like Oda hasn't really shown us that, yeah, these guys have a lot more in the bag. And I feel like that's kind of what we're missing. We've kind of seen everything they have in unfortunate situations. Yeah. Yeah. Like Burgess... This is before his devil fruit, and he was fighting. It's it's funny how confident Burgess was against Luffy. But like, Luffy was like, had no stamina, though. Yeah, Luffy was done, right? Where like, but Burgess felt like he could take Luffy. And he was like, then he saw Saba fighting. He was like, I don't know, this guy's fighting completely different. Like this, what's going on here? And got annihilated by Sabo. And so, I think. Even the the other big uh, Blackbeard parts, they, they they ran into Kuzan, Kuzan, right? I mean, come on. And then they ran into Boa. And so they're in situations where, you know, they need 1v1. They're going after something. And they now they have uh, a feat attacked, attached to their name and their abilities. So we can now start to presume, okay. Katarina, this is this is insane glaze, right? And I'm, I'm not saying this is one to one. Katarina takes out Boa. My God. My God. Can you, can you imagine the stocks? Yeah, that would that'd be some pretty high praise. And then, like, we could have Vasco Shot beating Bellamy, right? And then we could have, like, <laughs> why, are why are you laughing, dude? What? <laughs> I don't think beating Bellamy at this point does anything. What do you mean? Wait, no, it Bellamy might be, has It like, might bring his stocks down based on how difficult the fight like is. He's got like 300 million berries, dude. Come on. I don't, think, I don't think nobody would care. Bro, Dillinger beat Bellamy, bro. I don't. Yeah, but that was like, you know, that was like Nakama versus Nakama, dude. Like, Bellamy couldn't hurt that guy. Who's like, uh, what something do you watch? Do you watch gaming? Do you watch sports? Do you watch, what's something that you watch? Uh, Gaming. Okay. Um... What what gamer have you seen on the most epic losing streak? Like they were at the top and then they just fell off. Uh, the League of Legends all women team. Okay, and they're on a, like an epic losing streak, right? Yeah, they got beat so bad. I think they're banned from competing. So, so like, imagine you going you going beat them, and they're like, yes. Look at what I did! Yes! Which, uh, sh shout outs. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, there's like a whole YouTube documentary asking what happened to the all women League of Legends team, and essentially they just kept on losing over and over. They actually hold the world record for fastest loss in League of Legends. It, I it think was Bellamy actually holds impressive. that as well, right? No, Bellamy's okay. Bellamy's kind of strong. Doesn't he in, hold that in One Piece? In the Corita Coliseum, Bellamy was going around beating everybody except for Bartolomeo, and that's only because Barto cheated but my thing is though he used his devil fruit does bellamy that, have Bellamy's the record knowledge. for the fastest loss in one piece after talking the most shit too i think so <laughs> yeah i mean just one hit right i mean bellamy i, I like bellamy though like man. luffy's knuckles was like 
in his face, like implanted. Yeah. Oda liked that scene so much he brought it back during Dressrosa too. It's hard to come back. It's hard for Bellamy to come back from that. I don't like at this point. Like, how much do you think Usopp's stock goes up if he beats Bellamy? If Usopp beats Bellamy, I think that'd be really impressive. Because, like, there's such different fighters, right? Like, Bellamy's really fast. He's just jumping around. And then Usopp, he's kind of slower. And, of course, he's, you know, long-distance fighter. I think if Usopp beats Bellamy, that'd be so... That, that might be one of Usopp's best fights in the series. <laughs> Compared to everything else he has right now. Like, who else does he have? He beat, he beat Doga, right? Is, it, is, is that his name? Doga? Uh, at Fishman Island? I don't that little, uh, the, the cookie cutter shark. Dog, and I don't he fought him and he beat Chu. He also fought Miss Merry Christmas or Miss Groundhog Ch Day. Chu might beat Bellamy. Chu would not beat. Okay, <laughs> now you're just joking. Chu would not beat Bellamy. Daruma. Dharma is the name of the cookie cutter shark that Usopp beat. But he also beat him in conjunction with Chopper though. Like Chopper had to dig holes in the ground first. Okay. So yeah, like Bellamy literally would be Usopp's number one, like highest opponent. I don't know. Like I jokes, guess. like jokes aside, he really would be. I don't know, man. Like how far, like Bellamy, how far up does Bellamy make it in the Doflamingo family? How, how, who does he make it past? Bellamy, if he was like, okay, we have to set the stage. Let's say that this is a fake Doflamingo family. Right. And and, well, Doflamingo, well, Doflamingo is telling him he has to... Basically, he has to fight the family to, to prove that he's worthy. From the weakest to strongest. Yes. Okay. How let's far say, does he make it? Let's say there's two Doflamingo families. Okay. One of them is real. And Doflamingo is like, hey... There's the fake Doflamingo family over there. They're exactly like us. They look like us. They have the same ability, same strength, but it's not us. So Bellamy, you can okay. go all out. Okay. And then we, we can add in like a bloodlusted Bellamy too. Let's say they mm -hmm. killed Bellamy's family. Right. Like, like, like they burned his mom and dad in front of him. So this um, is like a, a enraged Bellamy. I think Bellamy could make it pretty far. What's far? Uh, I think he gets stopped at... He's really saying they killed his family. <laughs> they, they, he gets stopped at um, Gladius. So he makes it past Mogweiss and Jola yeah. and Dillinger? Run it back. Dillinger versus Bellamy. Do it again. Because the thing is, when <laughs> Dillinger beat Bellamy, Bellamy had no idea why he was being hit. Like, it was only afterwards where he was like, why, Dellinger? And then Dellinger was like, ah, like, you're, you're useless. You're not a part of the family. You could never be a part of the family, right? Like, like Bellamy was not trying to fight back. Like, like run it one more time. I think Bellamy could take that fish loser. I, you know what I didn't expect? I didn't What's expect up? you to be a Bellamy fanboy. Real, I, Bellamy's, he, he's a relatable villain, right? He's a great character. Right, listen. He, he wanted Bellamy, to fit in. He tried I think he's his a pretty best. good character. Never meet your that. heroes is what Bellamy's story essentially is, right? I, I just think it's be tragic. <laughs> and that too, right? I mean, and then plus he grew. He saw Luffy. He said, yo, like, Luffy, I'm done picking on you, man. I'm moving on. Uh, I'm not going to be He's like, the city anymore, in the man. sky exists, dude. Yeah, what, here's the thing, like, imagine telling a guy, I'm done picking on you, man. <laughs> That's so good. And Luffy's like, Wait, was this before or after I whooped your ass? When did you change your mind? <laughs> I'm done picking on you. <laughs> I'm, I'm done picking on you, bro. I'm, I'm, you know, I've let things go. I'm done picking on you. <laughs> Luffy's like, okay. All right, I, dude. I guess. <laughs> like, cool. Good I mean, for you. You got to understand, like, Bellamy's character, dude, he was so enticing that Luffy was rooting for him. No, I think he's a good character, but I think he's also a loser. Yeah. Okay. Do, okay. Here's a good question. Will Bellamy come back in the final war? Oh, please don't. No, he has to. <laughs> what are you talking about? Please don't. Dude. Okay. He, he's, for, yo, to me, he's keep an making our flags, of making the us dance. Fleet. Just keep making our flags, please. Just make the flags for everybody. How about this? One final attack. Rob Lucci, Luffy, and then Bellamy in the middle. They all come together for one giant punch. Why is Bellamy a part of this? <laughs> I don't know. Like, what? 
don't know. You, you know what? how like uh during like Endgame they had a scene where like all the women of Marvel like came together and they're like, I it's our scene. turn. I hate that scene so yeah, much. It's so it was too forced. It was way too forced. But uh, imagine we have that, but with all of Luffy's prior enemies that became good. Like Bellamy's like leading the charge, and he's like he turns around, he's like straw hat. It's my time to save you. And then <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't Oda? that be good? Oda? Would you not like that? Ichiro, if you're watching this, please don't do that. Rob Lucci please and Bellamy do come together, back, back, backs like this, and they're like, they're like, don't pick on our friend Straw Hat <laughs> Luffy. <laughs> and then Katakuri's there too. Katakuri, yeah, yo, Katakuri can be there too. Katakuri has the. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. And then Katakuri can like put his he put his hand on Bellamy, saying he's like, "Let's go, Kyodai." You know, like, um, <laughs> let's go, brother. <laughs> but one hand on Bellamy, one hand on Rob Lucci. There we go. That's and it. They do, the, they do the anime look look over like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And since there's three of them, Hell we get no. like the JJK panel. Like, oh, these these <laughs> characters have reached 120% of their potential. Hey, y'all need to wake Sai up out of whatever strange dream he's having. This no, is not this happening. is going to happen. This is going to happen. This you can, is, you this can this see it. Katakuri, Bellamy, and Rob Lucci all together. So Cat Curry's pulling up with a fedora. Yeah, exactly. No, he had, no no he has Big Mom's hat, Napoleon. Cat <laughs> <laughs> has Napoleon. <laughs> he's just wearing Big Mom's hat. He's taking over. And Paris Paris behind him fuming. Yeah, it should be he, my hat. Yeah, he's he's like, who gave him my hat? And Smoothie's like, let it go. <laughs> let it. Go. I don't know. I, I, listen, um, I like Bellamy as a character. I think he's cool. I just think his time has passed. I think he should retire. I think he should get into knitting. I think he should continue making flags. You know, um, just get into art. He should like paint bounty posters, what they should look like. What ifs? Like, what if bounty posters, if they could post for them? Like, come on. You'd watch those videos. I would. Like, if Bellamy yeah. made like a, uh, like a huge like uh, news tube video, um, and it's just like. Just talking. Commentary. Here's what the, here's what the bounty pictures would look like if the if the, if the characters could actually pose for them. And number one is Nami, and it's just the original one because she actually did pose, right? You got Zoro, Sanji, and that's what Bellamy does. It becomes really popular like Wapple because his channel takes off, you know. You know, and then maybe he joins the it. final war with a camcorder because he wants to document everything. That'd be wholesome. It's 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 uh, like a pit bull getting hit with a magic wand and turning into a a nice labradoodle. Ooh, pit bull! Do you want to bring that up again? <laughs> no, we're not gonna bring up the pit bull conversation again. Um, okay, Bellamy. If he awakens, he could make hella spring mattresses. Wait, do, do we even still use spring mattresses? No. No, right? Don't like, you have a sponsor for a mattress where you're like super high, just jumping on it back and forth? <laughs> Helix mattress. I remember watching that. You, you were like, you were like, guys, you should buy a Helix mattress. And then your B-roll footage is you jumping on the mattress and you're like smiling. You're like, huh? <laughs> you just blast out of your mind while your advert's playing in the background. That's bro, so funny, man. I still laugh at that every now and then. Bro, that video was like, I was just tired. So like after I Your while sponsors, I was recording man. the B roll, like I I think I've like dozed off for a little bit on the bed, so like my eyes were like super red because I woke up and just like yeah. oh I got to do some more stuff. But man, your no. sponsors are hilarious. Shout out to Helix. Shout out to Helix. Um, Love Helix. Use code BDA for uh twenty percent <laughs> off. Oh, you got a it. New mattress. You yeah. also had like that anime hentai game that you promoted that one day. You know. I forgot Spoiler the name alert. of it. I forgot the name of it. I, I actually I can't say that. But um <clears throat> I don't uh I don't remember what the ad was, like what it looked like. I just like, I remember I was, like I, I tuned in because I think it was on one of our collab videos. I think so. And the minute the minute it started, <laughs> I was like, ah, let me just like fast forward like you know, one minute. And I just got like massive anime tits like in my <laughs> face. I'm like, my god, bro, go chill, dude. <laughs> hey. Um, YouTube said you can have anime tits, you just can't show any areola, okay? So Yeah. Is that really like a YouTube rule? Oh uh, yeah, if you show any areola, you're, you're out of here. Man, I had one video that was like demonetized because of that. 
Yeah, sometimes it's like, like they could demonetize ago. because of big titties, but typically it's just like if you show like anything more than that. You yeah. Know, that's when Damn. It, Damn YouTube. Yeah. Damn yeah. you. Yeah. I mean, Road uh, Road definitely wouldn't be a fan of that, right? I don't know. Road might lean into it. He might be a fan of fan service. I mean, he's a fan of Nami, right? And change her into like risque Elbaf gear. I think he's a freaky man. Yeah. A freaky giant. Do you think Harden knows that Road is like this? He has some inclination. I think when a friend group, you always know the person that's going to snitch. Yeah. Yeah. Do you do you think Harden's going to beat Road up later for this uh betrayal? It's going to be like uh you know when Nami punches Luffy sometimes it's like a little like, cartoony like yeah, how would the you hell do you that? Doing? Yeah. yeah. It'd be something like that. Yeah, I mean in a way it's like no harm no foul, right? Like he kind of got his come up with the thunderbolt. I mean, yeah. granted we don't even know it's Road. Like we yeah. like the Shrats don't know who this is. Like they he has his mask all the way through. So they might, you know, might be a situation where they meet up again and they like, and he's like freaking out because he knows yeah, like he's something. Sweating. And yeah, he's sweating and he's like, oh, Straw Hat Pirates, good to finally meet you. <laughs> <laughs> My pleasure. I love humans. <laughs> like he's like slobbering, like Luffy, let and me Luffy's suck you like, off, man. <laughs> you smell familiar. <laughs> <laughs> Just something like that. Yeah, oh, something dude. like that. I think so, that would work. When they break through, last question, but when they break through the wall, do you think they're in Elbaf? Like, like where, where would you place your bets? Yeah, I think I think um, they're in Elbaf for sure. Mm. I think they're going to, we, we, we're actually going to experience Elbaf once we get through the wall. And it's going to be like luscious, big tits, like woman. My God. Just giant women walking around and flowing waterfalls and yeah. big everything would you ever but, date like a giant woman no not, not like woman. you know like not like seven eight feet i'm talking about like um a hundred meter tall woman would you would you date somebody like that a hundred meter tall woman yeah i, I mean i don't know i a hundred meters yeah no okay that's fair no and any like reason why you're discriminating yeah i just what am i i, I can't do anything with that that is true. Like, imagine what a makeout session would be like. Like, would she put you in her mouth and just swish you around like mouthwash? That's it. She might eat me by mistake. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Like one bad gulp and you're you're gone. I'm gone. I don't think I'd do it because it's like I mean I'd do it to like as like a like a reality couple, you know? Oh, oh yeah. Like my strange addiction. I love giant women. Yeah, something like that. You huh. know or. Or um, I forgot what the name is a reality show on um, Oshinoko, but oh, uh, uh, <laughs> sweet today! No, that's the first show. You you watch Oshinoko? Yeah, I'm watching season one now. Just got past the um, dude. Uh, episode eight. Yeah. Wow, Kindred Spirit. I'm finishing up season two pretty soon. I got like three episodes left. Yeah, yeah. I, I I'm really enjoying up uh, season one. Um, it's different, but yeah, it's I like it. it it's a very different anime. Um, you'll love season two. It's great. Yeah, yeah. And season three great. got announced. I mean, it's a interesting show. I feel like t even when they t start talking about social media stuff, that was interesting. Yeah, because it's YouTubers pretty real. And, yeah, it's like wow. Okay, I didn't, bro. When they brought up ego surfing. <laughs> yeah, you do that too, huh? I do it. I mean, everybody does it, right? You like Google I feel your like name, everybody see does like what it. pops up. Everybody does it. Only only place I don't like look up my name is Twitter. I don't care about what I don't care about Twitter. Yeah, fair, fair, fair. I don't care about Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. No, nobody really cares about me online, so it's like it's I ego surfing doesn't really work outside of YouTube, but it, I, yeah. I I totally I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> Better nothing than something. Uh so uh. <laughs> when Luffy breaks this wall, since this guy's such a big nerd, I'm I was kinda hoping that they would be in like his mom's basement or something. Oh, okay. Okay, like maybe I, they I break like the that. wall, and the reason Luffy's smiling is because Rhodes' mom is about to bring him some food. Like she's cooking him a nice oh. little meal. It's just something super stupid. No, I do like that idea where he's just like Oda's leaning him into the stereotype. Yeah, because he's like he's supposed to be like a knockoff otaku because of all of his uh, mannerisms in this chapter. Yeah, and so then it's then like yeah. Have he have like dolls and stuff like that like just yeah dolls up. his mom's like Road, when are you gonna be done playing with these little toys honey he's uh gonna have a big um 
a big figurine collectibles collector's yeah. edition of uh Sora. Oh yeah, he's like a, a big fan of um yeah, Sora <laughs> Warrior of the Sea. Ooh, and then for the Thousand Sunny, I kind of had this idea that have you watched Pirates of the Caribbean? Yeah, it was a while ago, but I have seen it. It's uh it's like in the first movie where they have the black pearl like Johnny Depp's ship and it's like in a bottle. Mm, do you think uh, they try to collect it? Collect the yeah, sunny? Yeah, yeah, maybe the sunny's like in a little like a uh, bottle and he just plugged it up on a shelf or something. Something That's crazy. something silly. No, I like that. I like that. I like that angle. Um I do think that like you said, Oda's definitely leaning him into that like that stereotype of just being a nerd that likes these type of stuff, so that that would that would add to it. I feel like oh my god. I'm thinking about like how the fan base would react to that though. I think they would like it. I mean, it's either the Sunny's in a bottle or like on a shelf or it's in the trash can, right? Mm, you can't put Sunny in the trash. Yeah, you we can't put the it. Sunny in the trash. Like I would, but you know, to be fair, like I don't think the fan base would like that in as a whole. <laughs> I'm just looking at the chapter again and Sanji said, Sir, is you right, you giant perv? <laughs> Yeah, as if he's any different. <laughs> if anything, they're like kindreds. Dude. Oh, wait. Dude, after after the Rob Lucci, Katakuri, uh, Bellamy team up, we could have a Sanji, Absalom, and Road team up. Oh, my God. That would, wait, never mind. Absalom's dead. I was about to say, you mean shit you? Yeah, who else? Uh, Vasco shot. Oh, my God, Vasco shot. Wait a minute. That'd be a Vasco huge Vasco shot team up. teaming up with the Straw Hats? Well... Not teaming up with the Straw Hats, but teaming up with Kindred Spirits. Okay. There we go. So a bunch Vasco of Gooners. Shot and Jojo. I mean Jojo. Zoro. I just watched <laughs> Jojo episode two yeah, season two. On the Jojo train. Yeah. Yeah. Started, all the swordsmen in the series, all the perverts, all the the great characters. Yeah, just that sounds throw them like all in. a Toriko and Naruto in One Piece crossover. That's what that sounds like. Yeah, just fanfic. Yeah, because well, that's not happening. With that being said, Brago, anything you want to end off on? Any final um, thoughts? You guys can leave your thoughts on Sai's insane vision about Bellamy being an actual uh, relevant character in the final war. He's um, going to come back. Just wait. I, I, we can all acknowledge Bellamy's a good character, but we can also all acknowledge that he needs to stay in the kitchen. All right. He needs to go and learn hey, how to cook. You say that now until we see Bellamy and uh, he's actually just a joy boy in disguise. Bro. They, like if Bellamy's joy I, boy, man. The only, I mean, hey, shout outs. The only reason I was able to come up with this theory, this Bellamy theory, is because of Brago here. He really brought it out of me. And, uh, you know, major shout outs to him. If you want to get more theories like that, just visit his channel. I'll link it down below at BDA Law. Uh, you can get all of the Bellamy theories there moving forward. I'm going to say, I don't think I have one Bellamy video on my channel. Maybe I should change that. Yeah, you got to change it. Tomorrow, it's done. <laughs> Be like, how badly does each straw hat beat Bellamy? <laughs> <laughs> and then and then you realize that Bellamy can beat all of them. There you we go. I see a lot on YouTube nowadays. It's like somebody's versus somebody, and it's not close, right? <laughs> yeah, that's like, like the, the the title. Bellamy loses to all the Straw Hats, and it's not close. Or Bellamy what loses happened? to each of the Straw Hats, and it's not close. What happened to the old school like uh, titles where it's like, oh, like Bellamy fights, you know, the Straw Hats, and you won't believe what happens next. One Piece, 1,130 plus Japanese <laughs> language. <laughs> I, okay. <laughs> Reeling it back, I don't think Bellamy's going to be huge, but I think he will show up for like one or two panels. I agree with that. Okay, there we go. I mean, Middle yeah. ground. You know he doesn't, he's, I was going to say, you know he doesn't last long, but that, that may be. Anyway, That's, thanks for having me, Sam. Yeah, yeah, of course, dude. Um, Anytime. Yeah. Uh, we'll catch you guys later. Peace out.